Hi, and welcome to SEO Hangouts with Josh Bashinsky. That's me. Uh, this week, we have crazy SEO stuff going on. Uh, the SEO world is just getting crazier and crazier. Uh, just when you thought it couldn't get any crazier, it gets crazier still. Uh, and uh, Google's saying one thing, and different things are happening, and and they're releasing alg new algorithms, and it's, it's just nuts. So I'm going to go back uh, a couple weeks. Uh, there was a John Mueller hangout, and there's been some other stuff going on. And, uh, and Barry was making some posts, and so I'm going to cover all that. And I'll get through as much as I can. Okay, so, all right, so back uh, May 26th, they did mention a couple things, and I'm just going to go through them lightning fast, see how far I can get. Um, John Mueller did mention, uh, it's a reminder, I've mentioned it before, uh, that you shouldn't be linking out on your site, you should not link out to uh, spammy topics, uh, anything that's really highly competitive, uh, limos, uh, pills, uh, you know, casinos, games, anything like that. Uh, and you shouldn't be uh, linking out to different topics. Uh, only link out to reputable sites and only link out to topics that are related to you. If you link out to spammy topics or different topics, it'll raise all different kinds of quality problems for your site, both on the manual side and the algorithmic side. Because it might look like a paid link, or it might look like you're, uh, you know, um, uh, it, it looks unreputable, essentially to them. I didn't make it up, they did it. You know, don't, don't blame me, I'm just, I, just, I just repeat what's said with my own spin on it, interpreting what it is they really mean when they say it. Because I've been in this business for 13 years, and I've talked with all these guys personally, as some of you know. Um, another thing is to make sure your primary content is above the fold. Again, everyone said this, and I've said it before, but make sure your con your primary content on that page is above the fold. This is important for their semantic algorithms to tell what the page is about, because whatever content is above the fold is what they think it's about. And it doesn't matter what you think your content is. Um, you can use the Google Fetch and Render uh, tool that they've recently released in Webmaster Tools to get a better sense of what they think the main content is. But whatever is above the fold is what they're going to think the main content is. Whether or not you think it's a hero image or a placeholder image or it's your standard ad or you have too many ads above the fold, that's what they think their main content is. And so you want to make sure your, your real main content that you really want them to know about is what is above the fold. It's important not only for their semantic algorithms, but it's important for Panda as well. And this is coming straight from John Miller. All right, now, speaking of Panda, um, a new one, Panda 4, was released around May 19th, according to Dr. Pete. And uh, John Mueller was asked a bunch of questions about it. And so I'm going to cover them in a bunch of different hangouts. So the first question he was asked, still on May 26th, if you want to go back and watch the video yourself. Uh, he was asked about Panda 4, and he said, Panda 4 is still based on the data collected in the last month or couple of months. And he, 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 uh, he uh, denied uh, speculations such as myself or a few other persons' speculations that Panda 4 might be page-based now. He said... For what it's worth, he said that it's still site-wide, a site-wide penalty. So if they find, he said before, if they find as little as 20 to 30 percent of your pages, uh, if those uh, uh, pages are bad, whatever that means, uh, that could be enough. Just only 20 to 30 percent of your pages. So if you have 10 pages on your site, if they find two or three of them are bad or low quality, that can penalize the entire site. That's what he said. And he admitted at the time that he thought it was a little draconic and... That's why he told everybody, because he felt a little bit bad. That's why John Mueller's great. That's why John Mueller is the best Google employee there is, because he actually somehow kind of partially cares more so than other Google employees. <clears throat> uh, quite a bit more than other Google employees, in fact. And so he tries to help people out, and he, you know, he knows that you can't fix it if you don't know how it's broken, so he releases as much as he can without you know, getting in trouble with, uh, with the Google authorities. Um, so, it's still site-wide, you have to make improvements on all the pages as possible. Don't just make improvements to a couple pages, try to make improvements uh, across the board. Whether Panda 4 is actually page-based or section-based, I think it's section-based. I think it's based on like a subdirectory section or it's based on a, on a subdomain section. And I think they're going to get more granular with it, because they just have to, it only makes sense for them to do so. That's the only way they could possibly make it softer unless it was doing some really dumb things before that we don't even know about, which is entirely possible because that would explain why Matt cuts when I asked him point blank to his face 
and in San Jose in March when I met with them, why don't you just give us a list of all the bad things to do? There's no way you could negative SEO that. There's no way you could spam that. The only result that will happen is it will make better freaking websites. And he refused. I can't, blah, 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 blah. So that means that it can be negative SEO'd. And I'll show you how. Uh, hopefully this hang out in front. This hang out and the next thing. I discovered how it can be negative SEO'd exactly. Um, okay, next one. Now moving on to May 28th. Now this is when they released that fetches Google, that fetches Google bot. Uh, tool in web uh, uh, feature in webmaster tools and it's very useful for debug debugging Matt cut set which I found very interesting also Pedro uh, Diaz is his last name I believe he's an ex Google employee and it was very interesting to me that one time when he was uh, part of a John Miller hangout he would use the cached version and that would tell him what Google saw which we, did, we can now also see you can use check the cache version if you do a search for your site a site colon search, or you can just check uh, the, the fetch and render in Google Webmaster Tools uh, and see what they see for your site now. And he, but the interesting thing is that Matt Cut said this is very useful for debugging, quote unquote, and Pedro Diaz also used that exact tactic to try and debug what was going on with the site. So obviously they could tell something from this, these uh, Google employees, one current Matt Cuts and one X, Pedro Diaz. Um, they could tell something useful by this. And so you have to read between the lines here. There's actually something useful for SEO you can tell by what they show you there. And, and quite frankly, it is whether or not that content is above the fold, what content they can see, uh, whether or not you've blocked your CSS or JS. By the way, they've recently started penalizing sites for blocking CSS and JS. That's right. I predicted they would do this about six, eight months ago, and they are now doing it. They are now, uh, according to Yoast, Yoast published very recently an article uh, that they're, they're penalizing sites for uh, blocking, uh, putting your CSS files and your JS files in robots text so Google can't read them, so they can't render it properly. So when you do, and this is exactly when the fetch and render tool came out. So Yoast is an SEO guy, if you don't know who he is, Yoast Gender Volk or Van Der Schalk or whatever his name is. Hey, don't get mad at me. My last name is Bashinsky. You know how many times I've heard that butchered? Do you know how many doors? Um, so uh, he speculated that that was probably not a coincidence. And I, I, I tend to agree. He's probably right. That's not a coincidence. That this feature that you can see how Google sees your site. And if you're blocking CSS and JS, it'll render just as like straight text. It'll have no style on it whatsoever. And he, he showed how a site was, was hit around the Panda 4 time. It wasn't actually at the Panda 4 time. The site was hit a week before, eight days before Panda was 4 was supposed to have been released. So whether or not that's part of Panda 4 or whether or not Panda 4 had a long rollout or whether or not they have a separate algorithm that will just hit you, will just demote you if they can't render your page properly. If Google can't render your page properly, if they can't read the CSS and JS, or there's something wrong with that, you're hiding it or blocking it, they'll consider that to be keyword hiding. And the keyword hiding algorithm, which we all has been running you know, since like 2004, might hit you, or it might be part of Panda 4, it's really hard to say. Although it did not come out on the, on the agreed upon Panda 4 date. So again, this is why it's so confusing, this is why SEO is exciting and why it's so crazy things are going on, because it always changes, and there's always these new algorithms, and you always need to listen to me. <laughs> no, you always need to listen to SEOs and figure out, see what they're saying and everyone's saying, try and make your own opinion of what's going on, but listen to me, because quite frankly I'm smarter than the rest of them. Oh, did I just say that? Whoa, boom, Josh is conceited. <laughs> Newsflash. Um, okay, so, but, but, uh, um, okay, so, so yeah, so, so sorry. Uh, all joking aside. So it's really hard to tell whether that's part of Panda 4 or not. Um, so we'll just have to ask John Wheeler more pointed questions and he'll, he'll slowly leak it over time. Okay. Now, moving on to June 2nd. We're finally in the same month. Woohoo! June 2nd, Barry Schwartz, my favorite, Barry Schwartz, Rusty Brick. I want to know why Barry's handle on Twitter is Rusty Brick. What is it with the Rusty Bricks? Does he consider himself a Rusty Brick? Does he, does he think he's made a brick? I, I don't know. Why, why Barry? Why? Um, inquiring minds want to know namely mine, probably. Okay, so Barry made a, uh, a, a blog post about how a webmaster on the Google Webmaster uh, forums claims he was hit by Panda, 
And John Mueller responded and said, no. And I quote, you rank as you should. So you can go read about it yourself. Uh, it's on a Google, Webmaster Claims Pan hit. Google says, nope, you rank as should. I can give you the link if you want. But the interesting thing about this is that um, John Mueller said, no, you weren't hit by Panda, even though you went down you know, drastically. And I see this all the time. People go down drastically, but it's not on an announced algorithm date. Now, it gets very difficult because they don't announce all their algorithms. They have quite possibly over 100 ranking algorithms running. Remember, they have over 500 algorithms in total divided between three things, ranking, indexing, and crawling. So indexing and crawling, we don't have to worry about so much. All we have to do is worry about ranking. And so if it's a straight split, you know, 300 divided by, uh, 500 divided by three, you know, that's like, what, 166 algorithms or so, something like that, for ranking. So that's a lot. And who knows if it's a straight split? It could be, could be only five ranking algorithms. <laughs> oh, I strongly doubt it. You know, it really seems, it's very complex. So it really seems to be a lot more algorithms, you know. But, um, uh, so... The thing is that they're running all the time, and so it, just because you went down, it could have been a panda day, but it might not have been a panda day. So I would remind this webmaster that, you know, it, it's not so unheard of that you go down, but it wasn't panda that hits you. Of course, remember, you can lose links, or your competitors can get more links, or you can not have any social signals, and your competitors can be growing with social signals and having buzz generation. And quite frankly, speaking of buzz generation, what it really is is that it's all about having current recommendation signals and current buzz being generated and good click-through rate and good usage on your site. All those things. Current recommendation signals, links and, so, and social off-page remarks and positive co-citations on forums that are related to your blog or, or just positive co-citations, period, uh, including no-follow links, and good click-through rate from Google and good usage, meaning they're not bouncing back and they're not bouncing around your site, just leaving it and clicking on the result. Otherwise, they're not going to consider you fresh, and they're not going to, going to consider you relevant. Um, at least not relevant to the experts with the author rank they're tracking, or the ex slash the expert sites that they track where these experts go and talk, because they're tracking where everyone goes and where everyone talks. Remember that bombshell I dropped about Universal Analytics. If you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, you can always email me and ask questions. And before I forget, I'll tell you, my email is joshpachinsky at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Josh Pachinsky, and you can watch more videos where I talk about these SEO theories, these new, really awesome new theories that are coming out of how it's working, and my experiments to prove it at youtube.com slash jbachins, J-B-A-C-H-Y-N-S, or just email me and I'll explain. Okay, so that, I mean, that explains very, I mean, it's very easy to see how a site could just start not ranking very well. There's so many reasons why that could be, even if you're not hit by Penguin or Panda or Petty Loans or the page layout algorithm, or the uh, the uh, freshness algorithm, or all these other algorithms that we know about, right? Um, it could be that, you, that comparatively, either you don't have enough links or social or expert mentions, and your competition does. Uh, but anyway, John didn't say, this is interesting the part, John didn't say that there was a particular algorithm that was hitting you that has a name. He just said you rank as you should. You rank as you should. That means whatever quality and recommendations you have for your site, all their algorithms are working correctly, and they're tracking everything that they want to track. So, you know, that means that there was nothing specific to do there except for trying to rank your site as usual in 2014, moving into 2015, not using 2008 tactics. Okay. Also, June 2nd. Now, John Mueller had another hangout. This was a very interesting hangout on June 2nd because he was having a special four-minute personal site clinic hangout. That's right. You could get John Mueller's attention for four minutes, and he would have a one-on-one -on -one with you recorded publicly and where he would look at your site, he would give you recommendations like he was doing SEO for you. A Google employee who knows how everything works and has all the special Google tools tell him immediately how Google is ranking that site and why it is ranking it or not ranking it. He has a special back-end tool to tell him this. He always has for years. Matt Cutts showed us this tool year, many years ago at, at a conference, which, of course, now is just more powerful. And he can tell immediately. People have gone on there and said, what's wrong with my site? He types it in. And he goes, oh, okay, well, I would worry about the quality of your site, and our algorithms are detecting this, and our algorithms are detecting that. So I know he can tell immediately what's going on with the site. This is the same tool that everyone on the webmaster team has, right? The 10 or 12, 12,000 Indians over in India 
that they have, and, and however many other thousand uh, 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 people on the webmaster team they've got in America and wherever else uh, in Europe, uh, they can immediately tell this stuff about your site. So with this awesome power, John Mueller started giving straight suggestions. So this was this was very fascinating. Now one fascinating thing, just as an aside, I was amazed that nobody, like hardly anybody, was there. Uh, he he announced this f weeks before. And nobody came. Like it's like no one's watching his hangouts anymore, and he barely has. It. It's not even always filled. Like, for the last three years, I've been watching his hangouts. He's been doing this for the last two, almost three years. I've watched every single one, and um, they used to be filled, jam packed. You couldn't get in. Now, admittedly, they're at like two a.m. for like my time PST. Like they're at usually sometimes it's they're like really early, like four a.m. or five a.m. for people in North America. So, but still, you know, you should you think they should be packed, right? So then they, they weren't. I found it really interesting. He was going to give direct recommendations. They weren't packed. Anyway, I I, I find him to be a, 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 a tremendous resource. So you can watch him or just watch me. And I'll, I'll encapsulate it all for you. But and I'll also be able to. I guess this is part of the reason why people don't watch it so much anymore because he has gotten so much better at his his public relations speak that it's almost useless to watch. It like repeats every time. So out of an hour hangout, I'll get like one or two tidbits to tell you. But anyway. I can translate the, the public relations speak because I've worked in public relations and all these kinds of things. And with these guys for years. So, so what did he say? Okay, so um, I, I'm just going to go through them again because there's just a bunch of them and I'm just going to go right through them here. First off, he said if a site has been spamming for years, they find it quote unquote obvious that whatever links they have in their backlink profile, it's not negative SEO. So that was a very polite way of saying, if you've been spamming us for years, then if anyone does negative SEO against you now, tough shit. Too bad for you. We don't consider that negative SEO, and you will get hit. And Matt Cuts directly to my face confirm this. And so, by the way, if you have any competitors who've been doing SEO like everybody for years and been sending links to his site and with a high exact match uh, link profile to his site, go ahead and just fire up SE Nuke and fire more links at him like that. And he, if he hasn't been hit already, he will be hit. So there you go. Isn't that nice how Google's made this lovely, warm, and fuzzy SEO community where we can negative SEO each other to death? Uh, okay. Um, next, he said that really old and obsolete pages do trigger Panda, which is still site-based. He confirmed again it's still site-based, as far as John Mueller knows, and he would have been told if it wasn't because he needs to know. He troubleshoots all their algorithms for him. So he kind of needs to know how these algorithms work, which he directly said rather indignantly to someone last year who critiqued him. That, well, you don't know how the algorithms work. And he said, yes, I do. Uh, this is what I do as a job, right? That's his primary job. Making Hangouts for Us is not his primary job. It's something he got saddled with. Like the poor secretary in 1997, the boss walked in and said, make us a website. We need one, blah. And she had to learn HTML, right? Same thing for John Mueller. He's a webmaster trends analyst. He's supposed to check to see how well they're uh, take feedback from the community and see how well their algorithms are working. And to a lesser degree, now he's getting more into doing public relations as well. Okay, and he said, so the really old and obsolete, so he does know how these algorithms work. And so when I say these things that are verbatim coming from his mouth, you should probably listen. And he said that really old and obsolete pages do trigger Panda, which is still site-based as far as he knows. And I quote, some of the quality algorithms look at the website overall. So they are looking at the website overall and Old and obsolete pages do trigger pandas, so you have to make sure you don't have really old and obsolete pages. That the information is obsolete, that people are bouncing from, that they don't like, or doesn't have any images, it's not a new modern design. You know, new modern design is the, like the last thing in your list you should do, but it's still definitely something on your list you should do. Um, uh, you still have to have a good design, right? The design can't get in the way of delivering information to the, to the viewer, let me put it that way. Uh, and, and again, he mentioned that panda is still usage metric based. He said, and I quote, as long as the user, when they go there, dot, 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 they realize the content is relevant. So, end quote, meaning as long as they don't bounce, right, as long as they recommend it later on as well. Uh, so, you know, it's really hard to tell how much is usage and how much is recommendations. Usage, bounce back to Google, internal click-through rate, do they complete the task? Uh, uh, recommendations, did they link to it? Did they search it, your brand, later on? Did they mention it on social? Did they social share it? Did they go to a forum and talk about it? Um, those kinds of things. That's, as far as I can tell, what they're tracking now. They track it very, very well. And don't, don't say to me how 
Don't ask the question how. They had $40 billion of profit in 2012. How is not in their vocabulary. Trust me. They own so many ISPs. They own so much backbone cable. They own the city of Kansas. They, <laughs> they have Wi-Fi stations set up in all these businesses. Trust me. They own Chrome. They have their ties. In, they have given billions of dollars to Firefox. They advertise into Firefox. They have uh, back-end agreements with all these different social platforms. They own Google+. Plus. Trust me. If they want the data, most people are logged in as it is now, as they're not provided going up proofs. At least 20, uh, search metrics did a, a study, at least 25% of searchers at all times are logged in. At least. They own Android, which a lot more searches are going on as well. Uh, so don't ask me the question how they can get the data. If you install Universal Analytics, you will be aghast at how much data they can get. And it shows you right there what they can see about your, your viewers. So trust me, they have the data, right? They need the data because links are not going to work anymore. I have the experiments to prove it and the comments from Matt Cuts and John Mueller to prove it. Okay. What else? Where was I? In my rant, I've lost my place. I am ranting now. Ranting, rant. Okay. So, um, so someone got annoyed with John Mueller um, regarding Panda. And they thought it was unfair. I agree. You know, if such a small percentage of pages are bad, they hit the whole site. And they asked John Mueller, why paint the site with the same brush? So John Mueller tried to give an answer to this. And basically, it wasn't a very good answer. Basically, he said... They trust sites that they trust, and they detrust sites they detrust. Google's ranking, I've said this for years, Google's ranking algorithms have something like called inertia, like an inertia. If they trust your site and they think the site is good, you can do so many bad things before suddenly they hit you. But then once they hit you and you drop like a rock, then you can do so many good things, but they don't trust you again until you're overwhelmingly good and they'll bring you back up. That's why so many in-house SEOs are so cavalier. Oh, yeah, it's so easy to rank these days. Blah, yeah, Panda, what to do? I've never been hit. Blah, blah, blah. Because they're in-house SEOs and they're working for a huge company with a lot of money that, you know, is above the threshold, right? They're kind of above reproach. You know, and they've been lucky enough to be quality enough for long enough that Google trusts them. And so John Mueller said, my point is that, that if you post, he admitted this point blank, if, you, if these good sites post a page on their site that they trust, then they'll rank that content already, um, even if it doesn't have any text in it. You know, if just the title says it and the H1 says it and there's no text, they'll rank it already. Of course, if you keep doing that, then they will detrust your site, right? Panda will eventually catch you because people will bounce from that page or, or their static thing will say, hey, there's nothing here. And what, whichever way, or both, whichever way it works, you know, or, or users will stop recommending you, right? But I could explain why, and Becker did this experiment a year ago, how you can rank sites that have no text on them. And, you know, uh, and how, does it, how this works, but it doesn't work for long. It's because it could very well be, remember that Panda um, patent that Bill Slosky was nice enough to uh, give an exegesis, uh, uh, a summary uh, for us for, was that they, they've detected, and this has somehow worked into Panda, because it had, it had Panda written on the patent, um, that... There is a backlink to brand search in Google ratio. If you have a thousand backlinks, then about a hundred people a month or ten people a month should be searching for your brand, right? Or whatever the ratio is. I don't know what it is, but but so that could be the case too, that if people keep find, finding blank pages, they might just ignore it and go back and search for other stuff. So it could may not be as damning as you think. Anyway, that's all speculation. But Clearly, having a blank page on your site is going to eventually hurt you. The question, uh, how exactly it'll hurt you, what algorithm will hit you, probably Panda. How that will happen, we don't know, but, but clearly it will happen eventually, right? Um, so anyway, so, so when asked why paint the site with the same brush, he said that if they trust the site, they will rank the page without even really checking extra things, including whether there's text in the page. Conversely, if they see something new on a slightly hit Panda, and he said slightly hit, so even slightly hit is, 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 is good enough for them to not trust it. They will not rank it. So if Google has a, a, a little bit of no trust, then they'll do things like this. They will not show your rich snippets. They will not show your authorship mark markup. They will not uh, just uh, decide to rank your pages, uh, uh, page one uh, until, even with a slight bit of, bit of no trust, until you have enough uh, how do you get out of this, you ask? Well, until you have enough links or third-party recommendations that they trust, 
and or until the entire site is trusted better or better quality, I mean you change the sites to change the pages, whatever static quality things I look for, you've, you've changed that. And or if it was usage metrics that was the problem, you've improved that. And then eventually they'll crawl all that, eventually that uh, panda will rerun and it will punch you out of the panda filter and you'll be ranking where you should be ranking according to all the other algorithms, right? So John Mueller directly specifically said that. And so remember, the takeaway there, I think, in my long rambling explanation of that, which was still pretty interesting though, was that if they trust you, then you get kind of a leeway until you, you hit a certain threshold and then, then you know a certain quality threshold and they hit you. And then when they hit you, even slightly do you trust it? You know, it can happen in your analytics, it can go down over time like this. It doesn't have to be like a waterfall like that, right? And and even with that. Um, they have many quality algorithms that work in conjunction with Panda, and they all talk, you know, the page layout algorithm, you know, uh, keyword hiding and stuffing. Even Penguin talks with Panda, we found. And they all talk with each other. Those are all factors of whether or not they should trust you. Never mind the manual penalties as well. And if enough of those hit you or any of those hit you, um, they're not going to trust you, and they won't show up your author snippet. They won't show up your rich snippets and things like that. And if you're hit really bad, you won't even show up for a brand search for yourself. Uh, but you usually have to have a really hard penguin, a really hard panda, and or a really hard manual penalty for that to happen. But I have seen that happen. And I have helped clients get out of that as well. Okay. Um, what is the next thing he said? Speaking of these quality things, he said you have to be very, quote unquote, cautious with blogs that have weird content or lots of different content. This is a static quality strike against you. I repeat. And if you decide you want to run a site, or you're trying to plan a business that's going to have a blog, that's going to have a lot of different kinds of content that don't really seem related, or you're linking out to different kinds of content that don't really seem related, this is a static quality uh, hit against you. So you have one strike against you already. If you make that an EMD on a highly commercial anchor text, uh, that's two quality strikes against you already. That alone could be enough to make you not rank very well. Um, especially if you have any backlinks in your profile that have the, uh, a correlation between the exact match domain and exact match. Like if I want to have buy red apples and all my links say buy red apples, I have buyredapples.com. That and and uh, and I link out to grape sites and I link out to Viagra or I link out to car sites, something not related at all. The, that alone is three strikes. That alone is enough for you not to rank. Um, the only way to combat that is just if you had a good age, a good size, a good number of pages already. Uh, good usage metrics uh, on enough of your site and or good recommendations and good social on enough of the sites but even then you'll still be dragging those two boat anchors on, on each angle. So if you want more, uh, uh, me to, if you want me to describe a little bit more about how that works, rewind it <laughs> and listen to me again or by all means email me and I'll explain that a little bit more. Or my devil cat, Matt Cutts, he might explain it. He just explained it, there you go. Okay. All right, so uh, yes, and so relating to that point, he said, and I quote, um, uh, sorry, the quote is not yet. If users decide, and I quote, the site is not really on topic, and quote, they browse through the content and don't read through, and quote, bounce, go somewhere else, they, quote, won't recommend the site. And those are all the problems regarding Panda. So again, I've been saying this for over a year now. This is how Panda works. Um, you know, I'm right. <laughs> yay, yay for me. <laughs> uh, um, you know, I, I just every hangout, I'm just more and more vindicated. Every experiment we do, more and more vindicated. So if you're just tuning in now, that's how it works. So this is the same old panda thing. It's the, the their panda and the other usage, uh, the other quality algorithms are all usage based, semantic expert based, all brand search based and um, uh, the static quality factors on their pages as well, uh, especially when it comes to user-generated content. For example, they just recently leaked that if you have comments, uh, they cannot be generic, they can't be duplicated across the web, they can't have bad grammar or spelling, they definitely can't have exact match keywords in them, and especially can't have links. That is a static no-no. That's a check mark in the bad column right away. So uh, that's another boat anchor that's dragging you if you're trying to rank a site that has stuff like that. So if you have any content at all that looks like that, especially user-generated comments, you have to delete that and be very careful. Okay, so that's where I'll quit for today. 
Next hangout, I'll get into some of the personal help that John Mueller gave sites, which is very, very interesting. Uh, but that's what I'll, I'll keep it for today. I don't want to make it too long. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for paying attention. If you have any questions about that, again, you can contact me, joshbashinsky at gmail.com. You can follow me at Twitter at joshbashinsky, and you can watch more videos about SEO where I've said a lot of stuff like this and more experiments, experiments and secret leaks I've given in other videos uh, at uh, youtube.com slash So thanks for watching. And uh, have a good summer, good luck in the SERPs, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.